This was on page 12, number 7, and it deals with winning percentages. So let's start at A. It says one of the PA, or Phillips Exeter Academy, interspective teams have started the season badly, winning one game and losing six and tying none. The team will play a total of 25 games this season. What percentage of the seven games played so far have been wins? So you would just take one win divided by... And be careful, they lost six, but you want to take it out of the games played so far. So one out of seven games to get their winning percentage, which is about a, if you do that, 14%. So it's 0.14 or 14% winning percentage. Okay, B here. Starting with its current record of one win and six losses, so one out of seven, what will the cumulative winning percentage be if the team wins the next four games in a row? So you'd add four games to the seven, so they played a total of 11 games, and you add four wins, so you get five over 11, which equals what? Anybody have that? 45%. So 0.4545 repeating, which is 45%. Okay, C, starting with its current record of one wins and six losses. So one out of seven. How many games in a row must the team win in order for its record or its winning percentage to reach 60% or at least 60%? Now, this one, I think we did the first time, was like a lot of guessing and checking. You know, somebody just guessed, okay, what if, what if we'd win five in a row? So they just went five in a row. That would be a, actually, that would be six out of 12, which is 50%, right? So that's not good enough. And you keep on trying that over and over again. And I think we end up figuring out, let's see, if we win eight in a row, Again, this is just through guessing and checking. You get 9 out of 15. And 9 out of 15, is that 60%? Yeah. Yeah. It's like exactly 60%? Exactly. Yeah. So they would have to win 8 more games in a row. Now, I want to show a more algebraic approach to this. So here's another way you can do it. Notice we have kind of, this is our guess and check idea, right? That's guessing and checking. We were changing that second number. So if we went like this, 1 plus x over 7 plus x, we want that to equal 0.6. See what we're doing there? I just took these and made them x's. I know I wanted to equal 0.6, so I set up an equation. Now if I multiply both sides here by the denominator, 7 plus x, Those would cancel, right? They multiply to 1. And then I'd have 1 plus x equals, distribute here, that would be 4.2 plus 0.6x. If we do a little bit of math here, minus some algebra, minus 0.6x, minus 1, you end up with 0.4x equals 3.2 divided by 0.4 equals 8 games. So, so 8 games will work there. Okay, D, suppose that the team wins 10 of its remaining 18 games. Okay, so it was 1 for 7. One win in seven games, and it won 10 of its remaining 18 for a total of 11 over 25. So its final winning percentage was, it's under 500. Anybody get that one? 44%. 44%. Oh, yeah, times it by four. It's exactly 44. How many, how many of us, the remaining 18 games does the team need to win so its final winning percentage is at least 60%? Okay. 
So I'm going to give you a little heads up here. We're going to play a total of 18 games, right? I want to figure out how many wins I need. I'm going to put an X there. What do I want that to equal? 0. 0. 0.6. This is even a little easier than the last one we did. That would be 1 plus x over 25 equals 0. 0.6. How can I solve that, Jack? You would multiply both sides by 25. Perfect. By 25 there, 25 there. 1 plus x equals 15. Subtract 1 from both sides, x equals 14. So they need to win 14 out of 18 to reach 60%. And the last question was, is it possible for the team to have a final winning percentage of 80%? We could actually kind of do the same idea. I could do 1 plus x over 25 equals 0.8. Then we can do the same thing we did. We get 1 plus x equals, let's see, 25, 25. Uh, that would be 20. So x would equal 19. But what's the problem there? We only have 18, we only have 18 games left. So, nope, not possible. 